presentation of NASA Garage. This week on Cruise in New England. Camaros and more Camaros. Camaros everywhere. I'm Paul Manette, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Cruise in New England. Today, we're going to have a look at Chevrolet's belated answer to the Ford Mustang, the Camaro. We're also going to visit the East Coast Camaro Club at their 30th anniversary show. All this and more on Cruise in New England. I've been cruising New England, meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Minette. Let's go cruising. For watching the Nesson Garage. We're back with our special edition on Camaros, and I'm with car collector Bob Martin. Well, uh, right away, I can see that you have the first edition of a Camaro, and it's a beautiful pace car. Can you tell me a little bit about why you wanted to purchase this vehicle and tell us about it? Um, I was always a Camaro person. I actually met uh, the fellows from CamaroPaceCars.com, and they got me addicted into the pace cars. I always loved them, but uh, they're just a beautiful car, and I started collecting pace cars. And um, this is a 67 pace car, 350, they approximately 125 still known to exist today. And this is an example that's been all restored. It's a beautiful vehicle. Can you show us under the hood? This is a 350 four-speed car. 1967 was the first year of the 350 engine. It was first introduced in the Camaros. Um, it was, they had ones that were used at the track and the one sold through the dealer. This was actually a dealer sold car. Now, did this come other than a 350? They did have 396 versions of them. Um, they, they are very rare to find the 396 version of them. Okay, now I see you have a convertible. Were they all convertibles? They were all convertibles. So, Bob, uh, the graphics really is what makes this the pace car edition. Correct. The, the blue bumblebee stripe in the graphics makes it the pace car with the bright blue interior. Um, all the pace cars had the graphics with the blue pinstripe and a no stripe on them. So, Bob, you even got flags back here. That's correct. The original pace car that paced the race had flags on the back, so I had the poles reproduced just like the factory originals to have the flags on them. It looks great. I also notice here you have uh, license plates that have Indy on it. This particular one, I do have an Indy license plate on. And then I see here behind us, we have the uh, the last edition, really, of the first generation of the Camaro. It's uh, They started in 1967 and ran through 1969. So you do have the last edition here, another example of a nice convertible. Now, do you prefer convertibles over hard tops? Um, I'm starting to grow on to convertibles. Originally, I was a hard top person, but the pace cars, most of them are now convertibles, so I kind of grew on to the convertibles. So, Bob, the 67 really is my favorite favorite of all these cars. Is there any chance we could take this one on the road? Absolutely. It's a beautiful automobile. It's in excellent condition. It's awesome. It's my first ride in a pace car. So I'm looking forward to this. So Bob, uh, uh, Camaros is not all you collect. That's correct, Paul. I have a few Novas and Chevelles also. How many cars total do you have in your collection? To be honest with you, I'm not sure. You're not sure, huh? Well, are you going to continuously look for more Camaros? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there, is there anything in particular that you're looking for right now? Um, I would like to collect one of each year pace car, and there's a few that I'm missing. So I'd like to find that and some, maybe some other edition performance cars. You know, it'd be great if you could have a little museum. You know, I mean, you, you're having all these pace cars. Uh, you know, it would make a great museum. So you enjoy restoring the cars. Do you actually do any of the work yourself? 
I do some of the work to self, most of the body work and paint, I sub it all out, but I like doing all the assembly and the mechanical work of the cars. Now, do you have a goal, uh, maybe at one time, that you may put these all in under one roof? I would love to. So do you actually take them all out for drives, or, or I mean, it's pretty tough when you have that many vehicles, but uh, I know that you do take them to car shows occasionally. I do take them out for a ride, just even if it's good to go around the block, it's good for the cars to, you know, be driven a little bit, so everything stays moving and working fine. Now, do you belong to clubs or, or anything? I do. I belong to East Coast Camaro Club, and I also belong to CamaroPaceCars.com. Wow. Now, uh... You know, the East Coast Camaro Club's been around for a long time, and, uh, you know, they do a number of car shows. Do you attend those shows? I do. Now, do you actually compete for awards at these shows? I do not. I just enter them in just to uh, show them to other people. I... So you don't even go into a category? I don't even go into a category. So what I say, it's almost, uh, it's for the love of the sport, it actually. Is, it is the love of the sport. I enjoy cars. It's what keeps me out of trouble. So, Bob, we've seen your first generation of the Camaro. And later on, we're going to see some of the newer generations. And we're also going to have a look at uh, a lot of the pace cars that you've collected. And I'm looking forward to that. A lot more of Cruising New England when we come back. We're watching the Nesson Garage. So now we're back with Bob Martin, and we're going to have a look at his official pace cars. Tell us a little bit about your collection of cars. This is a 93 Camaro pace car. They made 645 of these, and um, this is one of 50 approximately with no T-tops on it. So what makes it an official pace car? In 93, they had the two-tone black and white, and they had special interior on them um, to make them for the pace car. Okay, now over here you have a Brickyard 400. This is a 1995 uh, Brickyard 400. They made 50 of these cars. This is car number 47. Now, the lower the number, does that affect the value? Um, I do not think so. It's, you know, there's only 50 of these that were used uh, during the race, and I think they're equal value. Okay, now over here we have another pace car, the official pace car again from the Brickyard 400. Tell us about this one. This is a 94 Camaro Brickyard. They only had two Camaros used in 94. They had one white one and one black one. So this is the only white Camaro that was used in 94 at the Brickyard 400. So now this must add to the value of it. I believe it does add to the value of it because of the rarity of it. So is it a stock vehicle or is there something special to make it the Brickyard 400? These are stock vehicles. They just put the decals on them and, and number them. This is car number 51. Okay, now over here we have another Brickyard 400 2002 pace car. Tell us about this one. Uh, 2002 Brickyards, they had 56 of them made and this is car number 56. They had 12 of them that was for central office use, and this is one of the 12 that was made for central office. This was also sent to Berger Chevrolet that had uh, sent it out to GMMG to have a performance edition done to it. So, Bob, what makes this the performance edition? Uh, GMMG actually did some motor work to it, exhaust systems, uh, to up this one is to 475 horsepower. Now, is this a street legal car? Ah, uh, street legal. It's got emission decals on it. Okay, very good. Now we're going to move up to another Brickyard 400 vehicle, and it's also a 2002 edition. This is also a 2002 edition Brickyard. This is one of five six speeds that they made, and this is also one out of the 12 that was the Copo uh, Central Office production. So this makes it very rare when you have only you have two of the 12 that were made. Correct, and this is one of uh, five six speeds that were made. Most of your cars are, are the Brickyard 400. Yeah, I guess this is one of the Indianapolis 500 cars you have, and that's also a 2002 edition. That's correct. This is a 2002 Camaro. They, they used them at the Indy 500. Most of them were sold off after the Indy 500. They did save a few of them and re-decaled them and used them at the Brickyard 400. Bob, those were great examples of the fourth generation Camaro. Now we're going to move along to the fifth generation, which is a beautiful automobile. And I guess this is an Indianapolis 500 face car. That's correct. This is a 2010. They made 50 of them at that were used at the track, and this is car number 11. So this was actually used at the track? This was used at the track during the race, actually before the race. Well, let's talk about the graphics on this one here. This one here for the 2010 Indy 500, they did the stripes that go all the way across the top, and they put the door decals on them with the Indy Pace car emblems on the fenders. 
Now, this is the only color that it came in? In 2010, this was the only color they came in. So, Bob, can you tell us a little bit about what's under the hood? Absolutely. And these fifth generation Camaros, they use the 6.2 liter LS motor in this car, and it's rated at 400 horse for the automatics. Very simple. This is a 30th anniversary Camaro. Uh, they were all white with orange stripes. We can step on to this next one. This was a 35th year anniversary edition. They were all red with the silver stripes on them, with the black edition wheels on them. And these next two are performance editions. This was also a Berger Chevrolet car that was built by GMMG that was authorized through General Motors. And the next car here we have is a Tom Henry edition also built by GMMG. This here has motor work and exhaust work done to it that gives it the performance edition. They also changed the wheels and brakes on them. When we come back, we're going to visit the East Coast Camaro Club's 30th anniversary show in New Hampshire. All this and more on Cruising New England. For watching the Nesson Garage. So now we're back to the East Coast Camaro Club's 30th anniversary all vehicle show. Mike, you're the president of the club. Give me a little history of what you're doing here. Well, we've been putting on shows now. This is our 30th year in a row that we've been putting them on. The club was founded in 1979 by a group of teenagers who wanted something to do in the middle of the summer. So they got together, they all had Camaros, so they said what better thing to do than to have a Camaro show. Then it was started. It just grew from there, and uh, we've always been a nonprofit organization. We raise money for charity, and all the proceeds of this show go to our charity, Merrimack Valley Hospice. So, Mike, you have a Camaro history display. What is it? We do. This is uh, memorabilia from, from our first days of the East Coast Camaro Club. We have dash plaques. We have old T-shirts from road trips that we've taken, from club member T-shirts, pictures, photo albums, old newsletters, all kinds of memorabilia of showing the history of the East Coast Camaro Club since 1979 when it was founded. So, Mike, I guess we're going to see five generations of the Camaro today. I get a lot of great examples for you to see today, Paul. Well, I'm ready to get going. Let's go see them. I'm here with George Giroux, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his first generation Camaro. Uh, yes, Paul, this is a 1967 RSSS uh, Chevy convertible, uh, one of the uh, late model built in uh, June of 67. Uh, so is this an all-stock vehicle here? Yes, it is. It's actually, it's a uh, mat matching them as original motor transmission rear end and the interior. Can we have a look at under the hood? Yeah, we can take a peek if you'd like. Okay, let's have a peek at it. Uh, this is the original uh, 350 cubic inch engine, 3 V8 engine. Uh, this is the only car in 1967 from Chevy that you could get a 350 in at the time. Uh, it's uh, stepped up with a 17 inch for the uh, actual, for the SS package that they put together with the chrome valve covers. So George, tell us a little bit about the interior. Bucket, bucket seats, it has uh, the, the console with the gauge package. It's a two speed power glide. Like I said, this is the uh, standard interior. It's called uh, Bolero, Bolero or Lipstick Red at the time. And um, it has the, uh, the gauge package. Uh, everything operates. Also has a uh, dealer installed uh, multiplex unit, which took the AMF radio and turned it into FM sound. This is in beautiful condition. How many miles do you have on this? Right now it has 91,000 original miles. Great example of a 1967 Camaro. Thanks for showing it to us. We're happy to do it, Paul. Now I'm here with Ken Pill. Uh, Ken, this looks like the Black Beauty, a 1968 Camaro. Why don't you give us a little description? Originally, this car was a six-cylinder with a two-speed column shift automatic. Uh, in California, it got upgraded to a V8 with a four-speed and painted black. The car originally was butternut yellow, so it's kind of come a long way from what it was originally. So this is completely modified. Exactly. Can we have a look at under the hood? Sure. Well, I'll tell you, it doesn't look like a, a daily driver to me under the hood. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a 350 V8 with a, a mild cam in it, aftermarket intake, aftermarket carburetor, and a set of Elderbrock headers. Ken, let's have a look at the interior now. Sure. Now, has this been restored? The, the interior panels itself is original. I've added the aftermarket steering wheel, which was not on this car, and the gauges that are in the console as well. The, the upholstery is the standard Camaro uh, interior, uh, standard seats, original upholstery. Tell me a little bit about the hood. They call that the SS hood. 
It has the inserts for the, the other, they're fake grills. The standard hood on a Camaro would be flat. Is this what we call a resto rod? Yes, people call it a resto, resto mod or even a SS replica. Well, it's a fine example of a modified 68 Camaro. Thanks for sharing it with us today. Thank you. Now I'm here with Michelle Jelly, a girl. We get to talk to a girl here today on Cruise in New England. A 71 Camaro. Tell us about it. Um, well, uh, it's a 71 Camaro Sport Coupe. Um, it's got 58,000 original miles, the original interior, and its numbers matching. And I've done a few little things to it, like uh, uh, a new camshaft, double time and chain, aluminum roller rockers. I just put in HEI. It also has a four-barrel Holly in it with an Edelbrock intake manifold. Wow, this is no typical girl car here. Um, I just put these new rims on. My hubby bought them for me. Did you say your husband bought that for you? My husband bought me the rims and um, the center caps, that whole setup there, all four of them. Hey guys, Valentine's Day is coming up. You might want to get something for your wife. Okay, let's have a look under the hood now. Um, yep, I added some Canaan and filters. Um, the, the valve covers are actually from my first 71 Camaro. I added a little bit of the chrome pieces, nothing major. Thanks for sharing the car with us. Thank you. A lot more Camaros on cruising New England when we come back. Watching the Nesson Garage. So now I'm here with Rick Angelo. Rick, this is a 1976 Camaro. Tell us about it. It's a 76 Camaro Rally Sport Type LT. Original paint scheme, but it has been uh, repainted about 10 years ago. And how about the interior? Is that all stock? The interior is all stock, original interior. The only thing, uh, the shift has been changed. Other than that, 100% stock. So what do we have under the hood? Under the hood, we got a uh, Chevy 350, uh, four barrel. It's been a uh, Ford 30 thousandths. Uh, cam, intake, it's all uh, got the stock appearance, but it has been uh, all reworked. Beautiful. Thank Thanks you. for sharing it with us today. You're welcome. Pleasure. Now I'm here with Dave Dupret. Dave, a 78 Z28. Yes, sir. Boy, looking pretty good here. We'll start right off with the interior. This is all the original interior on this, this car. Just like I ordered. I've owned the car since 78. It's original paint on it. Uh, it has headers. It's got a Holly 600 CFM carburetor and Edelbrock aluminum manifold. Good, thanks for sharing it with us today. Thank you. Now I'm here with Louis Naka. You said you have a uh, not so perfect uh, Camaro here, but it's pretty nice. It's a 1989, why don't you tell us about it? Sure, it's a 1989 uh, IROC Z28 convertible. But why is it called an IROC? Uh, the IROC uh, is from the International Race of Champions. I guess Chevy, when they started coming out with the um, third gen Camaros later, they signed up with IROC to get the name designation. I think they sold a lot more cars when they went to the IROC. The, the wheels were different, the spoilers were a little different. A little fancy. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at what you have under the hood. Sure. So what do you have? It's a, it's a 305 tune port injected motor. Um, it's all, the car's all stock. The only thing that's not stock on the car is the steering wheel. It's an aftermarket steering wheel. The rest of the car is stock. Uh, there hasn't been body work done to it. It's, it's original out of the factory. It's got about 140,000 miles on it. Wow. So here's a vehicle that we're looking at here today that's a great entry level, get into the hobby vehicle. $5,000 and then you go from there. Correct. Thanks for sharing it with us here Thank today. Thank you, Paul. Now I'm here with Jim Keen. Tell us about this pace car that you have here, Jim. Well, it's, it's a little bit rare. It's 18 years old. It's a 1993 Indy 500 pace car Camaro. Uh, they built around 350 of these vehicles. Uh, only 150 were coupes. It's what they call in the wrapper, meaning it's the same way it was, de the way it was delivered to the dealer off the truck. So this is not a driver, this is a showpiece only. It's a showpiece. We took it to Niagara, Canada last year for the Camaro Nationals. And uh, we, we went up there for one purpose and we brought back the trophy. Well, congratulations. All right, now I'd like to have a look at Under the Hood if you show it to us. Okay. It has a uh, uh, Corvette transmission, aluminum heads, a cast iron uh, block, and it's 275 horse. A 1993 official pace car. Great investment. Thanks for sharing it with Thank us. Thank you, sir. So at the show here today, they have all five generations of the Camaro, but we also have two generations of the Jelly family. 
people. Now, who are you? I'm Rebecca Jelly. And now, I guess, yo, we interviewed your mom here today, too. Yep. Now, you have a 2002 Camaro? I do. Well, tell me about it. It's 2002 Camaro. It is a daily driver. Um, I have done a couple of things to it. I got my 18-inch rims for the summer, put a k &N filter in it. Hey, guys, there's motorhead girls, too. And look at how cute this one is. So here it is, the latest generation of the Camaro. I'm here with Carlos Ponce. Hey, it's a 2010. Tell me about what you've done to this vehicle. Well, a couple of modifications. Added some, some um, bumpers, gills, trying to bring a little bit of the 1969 um, DNA into a 19, uh, 2010 Camaro. Well, tell us about the Camaro itself. Now, let's talk about the front hood. Well, the front hood, uh, we added some, the, some vents. Paul, let me show you under the hood. The six cylinder, uh, 304 horses, uh, just a little bit more with the k &N. So what you do to the interior? Well, I, I added some uh, petals. I changed some yellow. I added some yellow, a little splash of yellow. Thank you for sharing this with us today. Thank it's you. It's a beautiful car. I love the colors. I want to thank the East Coast Camaro Club, and I want to thank Bob Martin for sharing this beautiful car collection with us. I'm Paul Minette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New England. Mm -hmm.